Well, welcome back to the second court of the Intel Administration Market. My name is Russell Wilson. So far, uh, we have a score that's been keeping the Intel Uh, on the bodies, uh, and these guys do it very, very well. They do. It and just goes course. to show the preparation. That yeah, they put in absolutely. In the lead up. Absolutely. No, in South Australia, we, we trial in September and pretty much start training straight away, and then we're here in, in April. So it's quite a big build up. It start like with the fitness and keep working on the skills from there. Mm. It looks like the Vicks have made a change. Uh, they brought Bruce, Bruce from wing attack into centre. Um. So, Jenny Lewis, the Victorian coach there, making that one change from what we can see at this stage. New South Wales will have a look for any changes from them. I can't see any at this stage. So, Lauren Wheel are happy with her team and they did have the lead. So, why not? Eight apiece now. That ball just being passed way too low by the New South Wing defence and unfortunately going out of court. So Vic with a chance to score the first two goals of this quarter. Oh, very high ball there. The Vicks are staying quite deep, just allowing that entire centre third to be free to give that, that mid-court a chance to really move. Um, hopefully hit that transverse at speed and, and attack the top of the circle. But great. great Great take there by the wing defence from New South Wales. Just acknowledge that effort, did all that D on his own there. And then great recovery effort um, coming back by the big goal attack uh, to come in and slow them down. Yeah, that's what you want. You want these boys to have a challenge at everything. Umpire's just taking their time to set this up right. Guy's not quite understanding what the call was. Must have been an offside call, I think, from where it was taken. Mm. It looks like it's been a big focus of these championships when you look across the courts. Is the uh, the emphasis on the defensive side of the game, not just from the guys with the D on their bid. Um, yeah, but absolutely. From they're attacking all, the entire the way down. Um, yeah. You'll see on the centre passes here, um, no doubt when you start up the next centre pass, you'll see both Vic uh, wing attack and goal attack get right down to that the defensive half and, and help out their defensive unit. Absolutely. And as you were saying that, Grant Mayling obviously got forward and almost got a touch to that as well. So really good to see those boys flood. Like I say, it doesn't matter what bib you're wearing. You're all attackers, you're all defenders. You're all got to do the same job at some stage. So got to be good and efficient with the ball. And New South look like they're playing just a very strong one-on-one -on -one game at the moment. Trying to force that uh, the big goal attack nice and wide and trying to take the advantage with the, the size of the keeper um, against Clint in that circle. Oh. Good tip there by Bernie Britzman. Couldn't quite chase it down. So we're going to have an end line and ball. And he'll look straight into the shooter, but I think it was touched. So another throw in. A bit closer to the post this time. Grant Mailing uses his body well in that circle edge. Gets the call. Feeds beautifully. This is sometimes problematic when uh, teams want to just throw the ball around the circle too much. And so it's just got to look to that post. I do like to shoot from close range, the men. A lot of them don't have the range that uh, some of the women do. Haven't, haven't practiced for as long and grown up with the netball for as long sometimes. But that means they really want to look and work that ball right under the post, sort of, you know, three-foot range or less if they can. But that obviously causes trouble if they keep dishing it out and uh, 
you got defenders nice and tight in the circle. Sam Macros getting up there for a really good touch as well. So here's a long range shot. And there we go. Missed. Sam Macros comes up with the boards. Just Vix hit Benny Britsman running backwards. Never like to see that. Someone will come forward and uh, either clean you up or take the ball off your hands. One of the two. That they will. Ooh, bit of a bounce there. Lucky to get away with not replaying that, to be honest. Yes. Smart from the Vic goal yeah. attack there just to tap that back out so Benny could feed straight away. He wasn't uh, in any position to take that ball with a challenge so close to him. It would be interesting to see if we see a little bit more of that from Clint Elwood. He doesn't have the one-on-one -on -one size matchup. Um, against the size of the, the New South keeper. So it'll be interesting if we see more roll-offs and see if we see if he can get him moving. Absolutely. Um, Those two just have to be dynamic, I think, to get around that matchup. So they're both beaten for height. I mean, it's just going to have to be on their toes, work out space, maybe a couple of quick flick look-ins. See how they go. Ten apiece, though, so they're not doing too bad, obviously. I reckon we're in for a nice tight game here, mate. Absolutely. It's going to go, go for goal for goal, and the thing you know about the, uh, the rivalry between Victoria and New South Wales, neither one of them is going to want to give an inch. So, yeah, like I said before, Rick, uh, reigning champs, they won't want to drop a, drop a game if they can. They've got to get themselves up on that ladder a little bit with uh, Queensland and SA in front of them at this stage. Yeah. And you'd be happy as an SA boy to see Absolutely. the improvement in the SA reserve. Boys yeah. up into that, um, that second spot on the ladder. Absolutely. They made uh, the first final last year, got knocked out, as did our 23s last year, actually. So we had two teams make finals last year um, for our second year back in the big competition. And uh, this year, yeah, our 20s are doing really well. They've won the vast majority of their games. Uh, beat Queensland a little bit earlier today on the show court, if you were watching that. And, uh, yeah, the reserve boys now in second spot as well. So depending on this result, they might drop to third, but still... Have them in finals with uh, chances to go through is really, really good. And the difference between um, sort of second and third with the tightness of the competition really isn't a lot when you get to that finals with uh, the team on top going straight through. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm sure Queensland will be sitting there on the sideline quietly, quietly cheering on New South Wales. Um, yeah, if, uh, yeah, if yeah, New yeah, South absolutely. Wales get the wins, uh, Queensland will finish on top. Uh, if Vicks get the win. Good challenge there. Has been called. Contact though. New South finding a fair bit of space through that midcourt now. Just making it a little bit too easy for Grant to get that ball on circle edge. And delivers a beautiful ball. So the driving goal shooter has just popped behind the two defenders. So if Vicks get the win in this game, they'll go equal on top with Queensland on 24 points. So it'll come down to their four and against. Um, there is one more round tomorrow, actually. So they do play their last minor round 11.30 tomorrow morning. So who's got the... It looks like South Australia have, the, have done their dash with their games. So... Oh no, South Australia have New South in the morning. So that will New be South. another. It looks like Queensland might have the bye tomorrow morning. Yeah, quick check. So Queensland will finish on 28 points and then it'll be up to the rest, the next four in line to see if they can chase them down with a couple of wins either in this match tonight and or tomorrow morning. Or in so that first round tomorrow. Yeah, SA New South tomorrow could uh, be a deciding game. Yeah. It's just a little sloppy on the circle edge here. Probably just need to tidy that up a little bit. Another mid-range shot goes awry. Vic managed to pick up the comms on the circle edge. Benny Brutzman nicely deciding to change uh, the angle up on that pass. Drive it out on the open side of the court, which is nice. And there's the speed of ball with the Vic's bringing that down again. Yeah, all the Vic teams usually pretty quick. When they get uh, to the open grades, they have a good mix of big men and quick men. Here, not so many big men, but they're all still quick. They train hard and they know how to use their feet. They know how to move the ball. Absolutely. And very well drilled. Yeah, absolutely. You very rarely see a, uh, a silly mistake from, from one of the big boys um, in any of their grades. 
held ball there. Good defensive efforts from New South just to cover everyone on that ball. Yeah, so the Vicks do it very well. They uh, obviously have all their own trainings and then they actually have a uh, sort of high performance. Benny Brutzman just throwing that up. He knew he was close to three seconds. <laughs> Lucky that Kivali got, uh, got that pick up for them. He is their co-captain as well for Victoria, I believe. Yeah, so Vic have an elite program where they get a lot of their high-performing under-20s, under-23s, men's reserves, all to come out and train with a mixture of the open men's as well on the Friday nights. So they have that really, really good that, program. Yeah, that development program in conjunction with obviously their state, their actual state team training. Um, and they have their M League yes. on the Wednesday night as well. So, um, which we're finding like a lot of the states are replicating. Uh, having their men's competition on a weekly basis, which is yep. continuing to strengthen. Yeah, so we have Emily League on a Monday night in South Australia. Uh, have seven men's teams now, which is really, really good for us. We started with four a couple of years ago, and now up to seven. Hopefully be up to eight pretty soon. We're getting very close to that, that mark to be able to put an eighth in. Great effort there from Benny Brutzman. Almost probably went, didn't go offside. Got some twinkle toes out. Dance around the edge of that circle. So yeah, M-Leg's really good feeder competition for, for us. Uh, we've got, what, 60 players here, roughly, and I would say 80% of them come from that M-Leg competition, and, and the rest are people that turn up to trials, and then we end up getting them to play in the M-Leg competition. So the two Absolutely. feed off each other. No, they do. And it's, it, the M-Leg competitions are fantastic. And if anyone listening is keen to get into netball, um, have, a look up, have a look up for your M-Leg in your local state. Um, majority of the states have them and it's a great opportunity to get to, uh, to get the young men or the older men into netball and and playing with the quality of play that are playing here absolutely so no goal there held ball court yeah if you want more information go to the amna website amna.com.au you can go there they have links to all the different state associations and from there you can find your uh, local place to play men's and mixed netball on that use your hashtags as well hashtag amna champs 2018 and Hashtag unmissable on Twitter. We also have uh, major sponsors for the coverage game clothing. And a minor sponsor's Medal to Go. Medals to Go will uh, have a post-match interview with our player of the match, which Dave and I will, uh, will choose. At this stage, it's so tight, 12 goals apiece. It's going to be hard to pick someone, I think. But you'll have to keep your eyes out, mate, and give me a hand with that. No, it's definitely the nature of this game at the moment. Both, it, I think the nature of seeing across the tournament, it's, it's such a team-orientated sport. Um, Absolutely. You just want everyone to get in there and do their role, don't you? You don't need the special players to come and make a huge impact. If everyone does their role and their job, then you really have no issues as a team. So, you know, it's it, not, a, not an individual sport. Everyone that gels together will, uh, will be the ones that make the impact, not necessarily the individual sport. And it's one of the great things about netball for anyone who's coming in to actually play it. Um, you know, with quite a lot of the other sports, they've got, you know, whether it be rugby or, or basketball or any of these sports, you've got a, an individual who can take over a game. Yeah. Uh, in yeah, netball, um, with the, the nature of it is such a team-orientated game, everyone gets involved, everyone gets an opportunity, and everybody, it's so important, as you said, Steve, that everybody plays their role. So, um, you know, we continue to encourage everybody to, to get out and give it a, give it a sport. The, the entire dynamic of the sport's changing. Um, and obviously, we've seen the growth of netball on the ladies' side yep, growing in Australia, right. and it's growing exponentially in the men's side as well. Yeah. So we're going to see some changes here. I'm not sure if there was an injury or not, but the goal attack for Victoria has come off. Clint has headed out to goal attack, and we have a new goal shooter on board. Yeah. So front-end changes. I imagine what if that's tactical. Been, it, would have, it would have to be an injury, Just, uh, you would imagine. You wouldn't make At 12 apiece, yeah. Would you? Yeah, you? I wouldn't. So I don't, I don't see anyone getting a whole lot of treatment over there on the Vic bench, though. So maybe Jenny's just thought, let's try something here for a few minutes, see if we can break this game open or not. Yeah. Uh, maybe winded. Maybe got a hit in the sternum. Maybe got a little bit winded. So we'll hope he's all right anyway. So some, new, uh, some uh, rebounds go begging there for Victoria. And New South will get a second chance to bring this ball. Lots of challenges on that circle edge for Vic. Really good to see them having a go. 
Haven't managed to get one clean just yet. Good screen there from the goal attack for New South Wales. Allows them to pop that ball over to the goal shooter. Clint now in a new role out at goal attack. Let's see how he settles. Um, as I say that, as commentator's curse. Commentator's he throws curse. that one a bit wild. But they did manage to uh, keep managed possession. To scrape onto it. But when we look down the Victorian attack in now, we can see a much better uh, even size matchup um, with Clint going out to goal attack. Uh, and beautifully Good read. Pick up there, yeah. In yeah. between two bodies, the wing defence comes through, cleans that up. Oh, just a footwork a little, call there. A little bit lazy with the feet. Yeah. Wasn't quite sure maybe when that ball was going to come, and then by the time it came, he was completely wrong footed. Nice steady here from the Vicks. No one free. And there he is again. Again, as soon as I say something. <laughs> we might have uh, Jenny over here at half time, I think, just having a quiet word to you, Steve. Yeah, so I know Jenny wasn't terribly happy when these boys lost to, uh, to SA by one goal. And currently losing to New South Wales by one goal. Score New South 13, big 12. I don't mind losing though, Dave, to be honest. You learn more from a loss. It's a bit like in the minor rounds, you know, if you're still finishing in that, that finals contention, anything can happen. So a loss here and there. You know, if you learn from it as a team, Sam Macris is putting that ball straight and but getting it back. The Straight coaches, to the New South Wales, but getting it back. So it was almost a double coach's curse. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, New South just throwing themselves at everything. Got that ball off the sideline beautifully there. Yeah, New South are unrelenting with that defensive pressure with the footwork, but keeping it clean. Um, you know, there's very minimal late body contact. There we there go. Goal shooter, contact. <laughs> we should maybe stop talking. Just want to have a couple of minutes off and <laughs> let the game flow. Both coaches are going to be over here at the half just asking us to talk about the other team. So there it is. There, there it is. is the half. So because of that whistle, we have New South taking the lead 13 to Victoria 12. We'll go to some ads. We'll be back for the second half briefly. dedication, fun and fitness. What do all these things have in common? These are all the qualities of Game Clothing and our brand ambassadors, professional athletes Laura Langman and Stephanie Wood. Stay up to date with all the latest ambassador and product news at gameclothing.com.au Back to 
the last game of the day of the 2018 Amna Championships here at Janine Nepal Centre. It's New South Wales versus Victoria Ones in the reserve men's grade. Currently we have New South up by one, so they are up 13-12 at the half. It's actually pretty low scoring when you think about it, to be honest. Yeah, it is low scoring. Definitely a game dominated by the defensive ends. Um, both are in clean. Mm. Uh, and, and it's been a real, uh, it's been a real standout. I'm it's sure. No ball that's been unchallenged, really, is there? No, no. But no bodies hitting the ground, yeah. which has been great. So we've seen no late contests. Everything's just been fantastic footwork, great hands on balls, tipping out of court. Um, both circles are doing an exceptional job, uh, not allowing front ball, getting around screens, and it'd be really interesting to see what adjustments a team make when you've got a 12, 13 score on half time. Uh, if you can get two breaks and get up by five, yeah, know, puts a lot of pressure. That, that's, a huge, that's a huge margin in a game like this. So it'll be interesting to see how each of the coaches makes their adjustments. Um, Jen's obviously been with this Vic team now for, I'd say, probably the best part of 10 years. Yeah, I'm going yeah, away long, with long the time. Australian 35s. Um, she'll be coaching them. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, what changes, what adaptations are made by both the Vicks uh, and, and the New South Wales squad. Yeah, absolutely. Lauren Wheeler, coach of the New South Wales men's team. First time out for her on the park and obviously doing pretty well uh, to be in this top four spot that she's got the team into at the moment. So let's see what uh, these coaches come up with in the second half, see which one of them can break it open. Yeah. And what would be really exciting is probably the, the age of some of the guys coming through both squads. Um, looking over at the Vic team, they've probably got three or four of their under-23s from last year. A couple of the guys went up into the open squad and a couple of guys are coming through here. So they continue to bolster their, their reserve team and they continue to bolster their future. Um, and same looking across to the New South Wales team. Uh, I think there's two or three of their, their under-23s from last year as well. Um, so each of, the, each of the squads are really bolstering their, their talent pools with the, the younger guys coming through to match the, the experience of someone similar to yourself with the experience that you've got, Steve, um, to make sure that they continue to get the transition. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you want. You want a good mix of young and, and older, wiser heads so that uh, they can pull each other in every now and then and say, hey, maybe think about doing things this way and share their experience and their knowledge of the game. And there's, you find, especially in you know, elite level sports, it's the cultural piece as well. You get the older heads, and I've got no doubt Clint from um, Clint Elwood from Vic and Ben will really set the behaviours. Yeah, um, The expected behaviours at training, the work rate, um, because they know what it takes to succeed. And that's the advantage that you have um, of having those, uh, those experienced heads there. And then when that youth comes through, that brings the enthusiasm, that brings the energy and makes the older guys like us work a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, it's what keeps us on our toes and, and guys like you fit, mate. Absolutely. All right, so we're a few seconds away from the uh, restart here. It'll be a new South centre pass, even though Benny Brisbane was standing in there like he wanted to take it. Umpire tells him it's the other way. Yeah. You'll find a lot of good centres will do that. It's always their ball. Their ball, always. That's right. None of these boys will back down for the ball anytime soon. A little hiccup go. there from the wing defence for New South Wales. Just turns to reset. A little bit of panic and throws it to the Vicks. So nice patient lead up here. Benny Brutesman using that experience going back to go forward. So I haven't spotted too many changes. Both coaches pretty content to stick with it. I saw New South Wales coach doing a lot of uh, standing in a blocking position, maybe telling your shooters just to get a little bit of, of a better hold so maybe they don't have to throw balls quite like that one. Very risky ball throwing across court yeah. along that goal line. These boys that can jump in there, someone will come through and clean that up. Good yeah. mid-range shot there from the New South Wales goal attack. And the Vic boys are doing a great job as, of, uh, of shutting down that front drive. It's, it's really clear that, that New South have got a real, real focus on getting that sweeping drive and getting that hold at the back. But the Vic's doing a great job of containing that and trying to force both shooters back towards post and back onto one another. Um, yeah, if you can keep that defensive pressure up for three seconds, that's when the boys out the front really start to panic. And we can see the, the Vicks have had a long lead up here. They're doing a lot of work outside that circle. And missing that shot. Clint coming through with the rebounds at full stretch. Getting the contact across the, across the arms. 
finishing it off. So still one goal in it, but New South with the, the lead on centre passes. Looking straight back there. The speed of Grant Mailing is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Getting tangled up there, going to uh, un into Brent Ferguson space, but New South managing to keep possession. Just to continue to see those challenges around that circle edge there from Cartwright, the wing defence for Vic. Grant finds some good space though. Sam Macris coming through with the right hand, gets a good touch. And Grant sprays that ball over the goal line. So Vic get a chance to even this up. Vic's rewarded for the persistence, the great footwork, um, forcing the mistake. Oh, we were on for a touch there. We were. Ball just went straight over our heads. So Vic really would want to even this up because they'll have the next centre, I believe. And then they could potentially take the uh, take the lead. Clint just opening up the court on the far side there. Good release there from the shooter too to get some uh, momentum going forward. Benny Brutesman using that circle edge. Again, trying to work closer to the post. And Clint showing his versatility. He's now got the moving game going. Earlier he was playing on the hold. Uh, now he's definitely moved off and he's, he's got the moving game going. Yeah, you've got to know when to, when to mix it up, when to go back to your strengths. But every now and then, play it a little bit differently. Drops beautifully into some space there and takes that nice feed from the wing attack. So 14 apiece. And if Vic can do this, they will take the lead. Danny Brutesman driving nicely to the ball there on the circle edge for the feed to the goal shooter. And they do it. Danny Brutesman showed great body control in and around that circle. He's wearing a body at the moment every time he's taken a ball. But he's been able to maintain that balance and be a feeding option without getting the call. So he's, they're not giving the New South defenders a chance to reset and get new position. Um, yeah, great defensive effort there from Sam Macris as well, just to force that challenge. And the ball spills to his goal defence, so really, really well done. Vic Boy is moving with a bit more uh, bit more energy and a bit more spite in this step at the moment. They've got this lead back. Bit of wind in their sails. It's uh, only taken them five minutes of this quarter to get back in front, so really, really well done by them. Good front option there from the Vic goal shooter and drills it. It certainly seems to be a trademark of the, of the big netball. Once they get on top, they, they can very easily put on four or five in a row. So New South have done a phenomenal defensive job so far. I think the next two minutes is going to be key for them to, to try and slow this run down that the Vicks have got happening. That's right. And at this uh, end of the tournament, it comes down to, you know, tired bodies. Tired bodies, who, momentum. Who, yeah, who's, who's rotated their bench enough, who hasn't. You know, your third, third quarter into a game... 8 o'clock at night, after playing a game earlier in the day, potentially, as well. So, and then couple that with stamina. Yeah, and couple that with the defensive intensity of the game across the court. Um, Bang, another one. Because so Vic shooting very well now. Yeah, this has been a very defensive game. Again, third quarter, six minutes gone, and it's 14-17. Vic's just forcing another turnover. New South need to respond now. They just look just a touch flat-footed off the centre pass. Looking back through the, the fixtures and the results so far this week, most teams are scoring, you know, 40 goals a game. So you've got 80 goals scored in a game this time. Haven't even got 40 on the board. And well past half-time. And it's quite often we see a low-scoring game is is a laborious game, but this has actually been a game full of uh, Good full of long look in there. Great pick up by great the Vicks. Looking. Yeah, great Yeah, just left, left Clint standing there all on his own. So good timing on that intercept. Vicks go, looking back to go forward, but nice, easy, safe ball to Clint. Nice drive into the pocket as well. Two options to reset on that circle edge. It's just an unnecessary contact, that, probably that one. New South Wales would have come away with that ball. 
Lucky they get it back anyway. Grant using that speed to draw the contact. He's really hard to slow up. I've played on him a few times myself. Actually played a little cameo on our M-League. He was over one Monday night in Adelaide, so played in my, my M-League team. Just stole him for a night? Stole him for the night. Didn't quite get the win. We lost by three goals, but it was great to have him. And that, again, is another thing that M-League does, you know. Those guys that know about it, if they're ever in another city, they've got a competition to go straight into, or even just for the night, you know. Yeah. Come out and play with some, uh, some of these mates you make while you're over here playing each and every year for a week. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's the... Uh the, diver the diversity and the inclusion, but um, they speak quite a lot about it this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I was very close to a held ball there. In the end, panicked and uh, Sam Macris picked it up, but they uh, have thrown it out. So we've seen a lot of this ping pong netball. The teams haven't scored for a little bit of time. New South here, just going across that circle edge, but being called back. Vivoli standing out of play. And we're going to have a shot under the post here for an infringement on Sam Macros. Couldn't quite see what that call was. So New South got one break back. So I really look. Great read for Sam to come out there. Just got cleaned up by his own wing defence, unfortunately. A little bit of communication. One of those boys would have had that ball. Very, very close to the sideline there. Great balance by Kivivoli to uh, stay in play, get that ball back into a teammate as well. Hard thing to do sometimes when you're that far off balance to still throw a good pass. Make sure you hit a target. Clint with a little pump fake there. Not sure what that was. He was looking into a shooter but decided against it, I think. Potentially quite wisely. Good chase there. New South, again, with some good defensive tips. Just not doing enough to come up with the ball, though, unfortunately. Long range shot here. Misses that one. Good follow. Oh, good rebound. rebounds. That's some fantastic rebounds. That'll frustrate New South Wales. They've got quite a big defensive circle, and, and to give up that rebound. Um, that could have had a chance to get that rebound and bring it down. That could have brought them back within two. That, that was the break they were looking for. Vic, another patient lead up here. Cleverino just uh, not established back on court, I think, was the call there. So throw in for New South. New South really want to make sure they score this one. They find themselves four down at the moment. Four minutes, 50 seconds left. If they don't score the next couple, do you think you'd see changes from the New South camp for the last quarter? Depending on what the New South, New South bench have got sitting there, is it going to be the areas that they need to, to work? The, uh, the shooter down for Victoria just seems to be getting a little bit better at the goalkeeper at the moment with his movement. Um, and see whether they've got a match up there they could bring on. Yep, maybe even just uh, switch the two on court, maybe. Uh, defender's got a, a bit of a bigger body. A bit less height, but a bit bit more solid. Yeah. See maybe if they can go toe for toe in the last, who knows. And sometimes in that last 15 minutes, even having the fresh body, the fresh legs out there, they can, they can, can make run make out that 15 minutes as the guys who have been out there for 60 start to slow down. Um, and that's the importance of the depth. And you were saying, you were saying before about um, the teams rotating players and, and having depth in the tournament. And it's a game like this where it can really shine through. So we just had... Uh a big player come out and actually wipe the court for us after that. Notice he's got a goal shooter bib on. So they're actually bibbed up over there. There's a center and a goal shooter for Victoria bibbed up. Which is a bit intriguing considering they are up. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be entertaining changes as a coach right at this stage. Good pick up there by Sam Macros, very close to the sideline. Read it well. Good balance, good control. 
Macris and Kavivoli working quite well in that defensive circle for Victoria. Yeah, the Vic's, get, the Vic's doing a good job of getting pressure up the court. Uh, and it's taken New South's ability to look straight down into the post. And then in turn is allowing the Vic defenders to come out and make plays, which they've sort of done three or four times. And that's been the big difference, which has caused a turnover um, for the Vicks and allowed this, allowed this little, little break that the Vicks have got at the moment. Goal shooter just wanting a call there, I think. Not getting it. Well done. And New South coming out with that ball. So the official scoreboard says that it is 17-19. Maybe there was a score adjustment there at some stage. Mm. Dave, I'm not quite sure what happened. I thought it was four goals, but apparently two. Oh, very, yep. very flat shot, just making it over the rim. So New South within one, and they have the center, so they could actually tie this back up. What do you do as a coach when you go down for such a long period of time? And been down for nearly eight minutes of this quarter, and now they've tied it back up. I'd, I, as a coach, would have players ready to come on and, and change, in, but now you maybe scrap that. I don't yeah, know. What do you chances think? are halfway through this quarter, the, the New South Wales team probably would have started to be thinking what their adjustments were going to be. Some good but rebounds it, there for New South. But it's funny what happens sometimes when you let guys play it out. That's and right, they, they get their, they work get their rhythm back and work out what's going um, on court. It's always a sign of a good play if you can work out what your opponent's doing and, absolutely. and shut them down. And conversely, uh, the Victorians are now who have been up by four, who had the break we were talking about, have now gone from being up four to now even. How here's do, they, a, here's how our do change. they review it? Yeah, here's our change for Victoria. We've got uh, a new goal shooter, a new centre coming on. So it was Benny Brutesman in centre that called time and headed to the bench. So very, very late change. There's probably a minute or so left in this game, maybe a minute and a half, if we're lucky. So interesting tactics from Victoria, I feel. Looking across, it looks like um, both players who came off, though, they seem to be walking fine. They seem to be healthy. Yeah. So for yeah, anyone so watching at home, completely um, the life field. any family, etc., they are fine. Almost ended up with a player in our laps again, mate. I'll be impressed to see New South take the, uh, take the lead into this three-quarter time break, considering their start to this quarter. You know, they, they lost their lead almost immediately and somehow have managed to scrape their way back to a two-goal lead. 21-19 at the moment. Whistle's got to be close for uh, three-quarter time. Vic will want to score this one. Just uh, settle going into three-quarter time. New shooter on. First shot of the game for him. He's going to look out and refeed. He wants a big close to the post. Clint looks in. Beautiful ball. That's where they want to be shooting from. A much taller goal shooter as well now. Yeah. We'll match that New South goalkeeper. And you can see a stark contrast in the way Vic are approaching that attack circle now with that substitution they just made. Um, you know, both goals very happy to shoot the ball before, have that skill set. Yeah, it's um, amazing how a single player can make a completely different dynamic. There it is. There is the three-quarter time break. So New South Wales men's 21 versus Victorian men's 20. We will be back shortly for the last quarter.
Welcome to the final quarter of this men's reserve match. It is currently New South Wales leading Victoria 21 to 20. We're about to get underway here. While we do, we'd just like to thank uh, Game Clothing, our major sponsor for this broadcast for the next four days. This is the end of day one, last game of uh, the day here on court one. There's also obviously a game going on uh, over on the show court. That is men's opens, which is New South Wales versus Victoria. So actually exactly this match, just in the grade above, essentially. I wonder how that is going. I can't see a scoreboard update yet. You can always flick channels if you want to, but obviously come back here because this one's a cracker as well. One goal to New South. Vic sent a pass. So they could tie it up straight away. Let's see what they do. Oh, good stretch there by Clint Old. Maybe an old man, but he's still got it, Dave. He's still got it. Not only the physical capability, but he's got the smarts. And so it's going to be actually interesting to see how he manipulates that circle with the, with the size in there. Absolutely. So they do tie it up. And we have had some changes. So we've got Grant Mailing has gone into centre for New South Wales. Bit of a wayward ball there from the wing attack, who I think is new to the court for New South Wales. Yeah. Definitely fresh legs down there for the attack end. Um, New South's just going to try and blow them out of the water, you think, with uh, the fresh legs in that attacking end? Yeah. Or whether it's to gain a little bit of control. Um, the Vicks have come out and hunted a lot. And whether the New South Wales coach just thought it might just be an opportunity to get some fresh legs, get some more movement, rather than have the static ball go in, which the Vic defenders picked off picked off a few times in that, uh, in that third quarter. So the lead's chopped and changed a few times. And we've had a few score adjustments as well, which uh, we haven't been privy to, to why. I think uh, dropped a two-goal deficit at some stage on us. But Vic looking here to go through to their fresh goal shooter. Not getting it. So held ball there called by the umpires, who have uh, controlled this game very well, actually. Yeah. Been a lot of good defensive efforts, but they've been kept clean and tidy. They've been called when they're there, and... Uh, means the boys know what they're up for and they can just get on with it and they can adjust. Great touch there by Kavivali. Again, just forcing the error. Vic coming up with that ball. Just everyone getting a little bit stuck on the same side of the court there, nearest to us. Uh, May with a good patient feed, just waiting yeah. for the shooter to open up. Yeah, and you just saw Elwood roll out of that space then. They've obviously got a focus on where Elwood is, they'll be on his body the whole time just freed up the shooter um, with the New South Wales keeper, just getting caught behind yep. So beautifully read by Clint oh, nothing up front though another so held ball forced by New mm. South Wales maybe the, the changes in the front end not working quite so well Story is a new goal shooter just a different dynamic. The Vic boys out in the midcourt haven't quite adjusted to it yet. But they wouldn't be panicking. They've still got the lead. With this top uh, five going through, this game's got not really going to do anything for anyone in terms of percentage. So it will still be very, very tight after that last round of uh, games at 11.30 tomorrow morning. So if you want to tune into the... Uh, continuation of this grade there will be games on both the show court and court one here again 11.30 tomorrow see who finishes in those top spots see who gets the break and see who has to play four games of finals to win a national championship every uh, grade here does have a different final structure depending on how many teams are in it so open men's for example only have uh, the five teams and therefore play a four-team final series. Traditional top four. Traditional top four style. Uh, mixed reserves have eight, I think, and they play a different final series as well. They play an elimination round, so one versus eight, two versus uh, seven, seven. etc. Yep. All the way through, and so they play four or five rounds of finals as well. And then the, uh, the junior grades play all their different final structures as well. So every, every grade is completely independent and run... Uh, 
as best they can essentially to get as many games and as much competition as possible across the, the week, especially yeah. the pointy end of the week when it counts. And there might be some people asking uh, at home asking why would they be different? Why wouldn't we just have a normal top four, etc., for each of the grades? Um, Amda are very strong in their beliefs about having their um, their open grades that they have, but providing fantastic development opportunities for everyone coming Absolutely. through to play at the next level. Um, and so when it comes to finals, it's it's about exposing everybody to have those the extra games, the extra pressure that it comes with playing finals and that opportunity for as many people as possible. Because they right. understand yeah. that's how we're going to develop. Absolutely, and, that, and uh, they put no limit on the uh, on the growth of the competition as well. So that may mean in the future new grades. Um, obviously, Vic have two teams in this grade as well. So if it, uh, if the state does want to nominate multiple uh, multiple teams in a grade, they're more than welcome. Um, priority is to you know have an opens team first, though, of course, um, and then fill as many grades underneath that as you, as you possibly can. And that's good for the States, and it's good for, for the week that we have over here as well. Absolutely. Nice uh, mid-range shot there from the New South Wales goal attack. Ties the game up at 23 apiece and gives New South the centre pass. So they score off the Vic centre pass. And if they can score off this one, they'll be uh, looking good. Good, strong take there again. Oh, Grant just feeds that ball a little too a little too flat, a little too quick. Probably should have put a little bit more arc on it. So the Vic boys come up with another defensive turnover. Not a good pass there from Kavinley, unfortunately. So six minutes, in, six minutes into this quarter uh, has resulted in a continued tight tussle. Um, oh. Very flat shot there from New South. Just need to make sure they steady and uh, take their time. Both teams probably feeling a little bit under the pump, to be honest. Oh, another pass from Gavimoli cut off. That's two, the last two times those Vic boys got to be puffing hard in defense now. They've been working for a little while. The ball's been down there and they've had it a couple of times. And you watch them, it's very rarely that their feet will stop working. Absolutely, yeah. That touch there as well. Sprayed out of court from the Vic boys. They probably could have come forward and taken that intercept, but just been under the pump for probably a good minute of this game now. And still no one goes anywhere. No score on the board. Hence why it's 23-23. Eight minutes to go in uh, the last quarter. I would have to say this is probably the most low-scoring game in this, uh, in this grade. In, in the grade? Potentially in the tournament that I've seen. But again, it's not because it's it's poor netball. It's because the quality of the defense on both sides is so intense um, and well-disciplined. You know, we're not seeing a lot of contact calls. We're not seeing a lot of obstruction calls. And it's... Well, I think that was a step there missed by the uh, umpires as he changes balance. Probably could have been a contact call as well, but that's right. We'll let it go. Umpires don't see everything. And we've got time. Time called here by the goal defence. Kavivali, they're going to have to swap bibs and get a new defender on. So it looks like Cartwright is going to push back from wing defence into goal defence. So a much smaller goal defence. And I think it's just, uh, Chris Cameron's coming on into wing defence there. You imagine this will change the dynamic of the Vicks bringing the ball out too. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, they obviously did struggle that, <laughs> that last minute there couple of times so so they've just gone a little bit quicker shorter, yeah shorter quicker um, through that defensive end so they'll need to be they'll still need to be focused on the, in the defensive circle because they'll be a touch shorter but potentially that move was made to help them bring the ball out and just recreate some of that speed that they'd be looking for yeah Sam Macros is definitely getting lots of touches in that circle that's just what they do with it next really isn't it So Vic, do work this one out. Oh, and why did I say anything, mate? As soon as Tom I said they worked this one out. Again. But again, Sam Akris comes up with the ball. Bit of a heavy hit there. We were just saying how clean it was. And again, we've cursed the lads out there on court. If heavy you, knock, but... If you do keep this commentator's curse up, we'll get the feeling one of these coaches may pay you to commentate their game and talk a lot about the opposition. 
So Vic's, Vic's going to go ahead by one now. I, I'm happy to go professional, by the way. I'm happy to get paid for this, you know. Everyone, yeah. everyone here volunteering their time. Umpires, officials, administrators. Players all pay their own way, but it is uh, just a fantastic festival of netball for everyone to, to pull together. And you make so many good mates over the, yeah. over the years. And so I think we should, we should take the opportunity to, to mention the umpires who said, um, while all the players are out here looking for their, uh, you know, for their chance at glory with their teams, uh, each of the umpires are also working their way through for their own, uh, their own improvement, Absolutely. their own development, and you know, looking for their national badges, etc. Absolutely, so yep. We've seen national badges we've and seen national tours as well. Same as the players, they get the opportunity to come away and, and, and tour with the Australian teams. And there's eight touring teams going away this year, so phenomenal touring year for... Uh, the Australian teams yep. as well. So seeing uh, a number of the development teams going into Papua New Guinea. Yes. Um, as well as the Trans-Tasman for the Open teams and a couple of the underage in, teams. In yeah. Adelaide, I, I will be hosting that event. So I'm looking forward to that in October. So in saying all that, good luck to all the umpires out there who might be watching, who are... Who sort of had their own their own individual goals yeah. within the tournament? All, so. all fifty five of them, huge contingent, fifty five umpires, more than we have for the teams we have, which is really good, because it means they can spread the load. They don't have to do that game after game after game, which means they get more quality time on court, working on what they need to work on. They get good feedback. I believe there's three uh, senior umpires giving feedback to all of the umpires as well. No, there certainly is, and it's not only the coaching that they get here, but it's just it's the hard it's the hard work that they do in, in all the lead ups as well. But we're yeah, sitting absolutely. there with, with four minutes left left in this game, and um, and neither team at the moment can really break away. So we saw uh, we saw Vix get ahead in the last in the first half of the third quarter before New South Wales came back. And so it'll be very interesting to see how both teams close out the, this final uh, three minutes, 25. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen plenty of changes too, really. None of them seem to have been planned changes at the quarter, though. They've all been, let's make a change now for a minute and a half in this, this quarter, see if we can do something at the end. Just got a bit of a time out here to wipe the court, I think. Yeah, so all the changes have been sort of maybe on the... On the fly, let's uh, let's change it up. See if we can make a dent. And when it's 25 apiece, might see it again. You never know. No. Three minutes. All it takes is one right change or one change that's not quite as effective. That's right. Um, to impact it, and this is where this is where the influence of the coach and and their advisors on the sideline, um, you know, have a huge impact on the game as well as the output of the players on the floor. Great take there by Grant Mailing. Just didn't balance himself and deliver that ball properly. So Vic, come up with it again. Their defense has been pretty solid. No. Both defensive ends have just been great. So in, the, in this format, during the rounds, if it, if it is a tie at the end of the game, there's no overtime? Correct, yep, stays it does a draw. Just go down as a draw. So we have had a tie, I believe in one of the other grades. I, I did see someone had a 41 all tie. I'm not sure if it was in this grade or not. Yeah, no, there was definitely, there was a tie between, uh, in the open mix between Victoria and Queensland. And there was also a tie between uh, SA and... Uh, someone else in this grade. Potentially the big, I think, I think the you're right. I think the SA boys did, did draw, um, yes. I think there was a draw there too, so... Um, and funnily enough, when you got four points for a, for a win and two for a draw, uh, the culmination of either those draws <laughs> yeah. or um, getting two points or not getting four can play significant on the ladder towards the end of the week. So, yeah, that's interesting you say that that draw happened because Vic 2 are currently sitting in six just out of finals and they actually drew to South Australia who was in second. So it is an amazingly tight cop between one and six. Story putting that one in there to tie it back up. A great physical take. New South Wales asking for contact on the post, but I think that might have just been an advantage call played by the umpire. I think it might yeah. have been a bit of contact in the air. 
let that go, play let the, the incidental contact with the, with the post, which is, you know, it's great umpiring, and we want to see the players play. That's right. We've got less than a minute to go here, and I cannot tell you who is going to win this game. New South go out in front. And we are into the dying moment. So Vic, want to make sure they're settled. There isn't a rush at this stage. Players don't know how long they've got. Just off balance there, Vic. Long ball to Clint Orwood, well and he's learned. managed to take it on the baseline. If he hits this, that it is, is going to be tight. New South centre. Confidence and patience by the Vicks to trust themselves and back their instincts and Absolutely. decisions. Our sneaky little timer says we've got 24 seconds left in this game. May not be the official timer, but we're pretty sure the next goal could almost win it. We'll let you know when the umpire stands up, which usually gives us about 10 seconds to go. So, haven't seen any movement over there yet. New South boys puffing hard. Good patience there. Got it on the circle edge. Very patient. Oh, looks to the post. This could be it. This could be the game. So for those who oh, may, yeah. may not be able to see, the umpires, timing umpire is still sitting down. So there's still plenty of time for the VIX. And there might have been a little bit of panic there. Absolutely. Um, umpire still sitting down, but they made the call to go in early to Story. Um, Story just trying to clear some space, got pulled with the contact call. Yeah. One of the scorers has just moved over. I think it might be very yeah. close to time here. I think New South are going to get away with this win. There it is. Final yeah, sign. New South Wales get up 28 to 27. We'll uh, throw to some ads and we'll come back with the player of the match for the medals to go. Yeah, to the final game of the night. We had an absolute thriller here on court one. I'm with the medal to go best player, Sam Macris, from unfortunately the losing team. Sammy, how'd you see that game, mate? Uh, definitely not the result we wanted. Um, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, absolutely, it hurts. We uh, comment in the commentary box were saying just how much of a defensive game it was. The scoreline, 28-27, when most of these games in this grade, you know, teams are scoring 40 goals. So. Your boys, you know, and New South boys both did very well to play a good defensive game. Yeah, I think definitely, 100%. For, I can't believe that scoreline, but there's a lot for us to improve on. I mean, it's definitely positive in terms of our defence. We just need to work on our attack, work on converting a bit more, and we'll be fine. So, definitely not the end of the world for us. We'll move on. We've got this. Absolutely. So, you will be in the final series, I would imagine. One minor round game to go. <sighs> but not... Uh, from being the defending champions, not uh, quite where you want to be sitting in that lower half of the final series. Uh, no, so definitely a little bit different to last year. Obviously finishing top last year compared to this, but we're willing to put the hard yards in. We know we've got a few new players in our team. It's going to take a while for us to gel, and it could be a positive, you know, to be honest, have that extra final game tomorrow. So, Well, it could be a very long final series for you, but best of luck, mate. Well done on our medal to go player of the guts. See you, Sam. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We are done for day one of the live streaming. Thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow.